needed to be held in three of five. Last night I was up till like 12.30 watching the storm and I swear on radar, we got rain here. But no, it is bone dry still. There's nothing. This is, wow. Two weeks ago we spread urea, but it's getting dry. Dang. I get really excited. I haven't seen this corn in like two or three weeks. It would be, when did we do that? Two weeks. This stuff really grew quick in two weeks. It is starting to get real pineapple-y and stuff, but it's showing right now, fingers crossed, but I think we're gonna get like an inch here. Hopefully, we'll see. It'll be, uh, I think it'll be real scattered and stuff. Man, look how pineapple-y it's looking. Hopefully we get some rain tonight. It's kind of weird, this, uh, this new stuff that the Pioneer guy sold me, it's like a new variety, it's like 12, I think it's 12, 13 a.m. or something like that, I'll put it in if I'm wrong. This stuff like looks the best. It's almost like, it's weird. This stuff isn't pineapple and up. It, I don't know if it's like this spot, that this spot's a little wet or stuff, or if it's just the variety that's like has, I don't know, maybe, maybe some type of drought trade on it or something. This stuff is like looking the best. It's weird. It's a week later now and we got like four or five inches of rain throughout this whole week. We got, here we got super lucky, like super lucky. I know there's some parts in Iowa, especially like northern, northwest Iowa that are still really, really dry and that's, man, that's gotta be tough. Uh, but we got super lucky here. And we got like two inches the Sunday right after I record this. Then we got like two more inches and then we got like half an inch, half an inch and like a, a quarter or something. So it just kind of added up. That's just what I've heard from the neighbors and what I just kind of saw on radar. Man, this stuff was looking rough and it got a lot of moisture here. This is just crazy how fast this corn took off though. Okay, I'm at the other farm that you guys probably just saw a drone video of. And uh, this is where I'm thinking about putting the shed. Well. I gotta lock it in like this week here and we need to start mowing down like an acre of corn and getting this building pad ready. Okay, so here's a nice driveway. Flat, we got electric, we have gas, we have water in the road. And I'm just trying to figure out where do you put it out here? It's pretty flat through here. I was thinking I wanna be a little ways off the road. I don't wanna be right next to the road. I wanna be a little ways back so that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. I got some drone footage and we're gonna decide and then probably mow out like an acre and put the building there. And I think that's uh, Man Family Farms. How you doing Grant? Good, how are you? Now I gotta figure out where to put the shed. So, okay, so obviously the shed is not going on the other farm. No, because you'll see, I, well, I'll get your opinion This is just it. a better location. Yeah, it's a little more north too, so. My other farm I was gonna put it on was 12 miles south of here. Okay. And this is on paved road too, so. Oh yeah, it makes, this is your, this is gonna be your hangout spot. Yeah. You got electricity here. Yep. So a week ago today, I'm watching, I feel like was your most recent video. You were spreading uh, some fertilizer on one of your farms. I don't know which one, it's not important. And your brother's driving the tractor and he was driving over the rows or something because he was trying to adjust the radio and someone said well if i only had a radio bar to rest my hand on <laughs> well today is the day there we go you are getting the man family farms radio bar installed okay do you guys now, sell these i i i should i haven't had that much demand maybe until now now we have two versions here we yep. have like the quarter inch tube and we have the 5 sixteenths. Okay. Now I prefer the 5 sixteenths because you can actually kind of like hang your hand on it. So what's the technique when you do it? You can pressure, and what I do a lot of times when I'm planting, or if you're in the auger wagon, you can, I mean, you can kind of like hang your hand on there. I mean, I wouldn't like pull your whole body weight on <laughs> it, but you can like rest your hand there, okay? Yeah. So now, to follow up, what really makes the tractor is what I call the planter peg. And the reason I call it the planter peg is, so when you're out here in your tractor, and, oh, I'm backing up to a fence row, or you're coming through a waterway, you reach over and you latch onto this baby, and you just hang on. It's just great. You know, you're not putting your hand here. Yeah. Maybe your hand's sweaty or dirty, you got talc on it. 
So we'll get this baby mounted. And of course you got pen holder. The sleek pen holder. Awesome. And this is mine. I just brought this for display. This is a ground temperature thermometer. Okay. Oh, guess what? That fits in there as well. Nice. So that is my gift to you, Grant. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for hashtagging us in the uh, video last week. And here you are. You are set up, ready to go. There we go. All right. Spence has no excuses. Yep. Well, only on a Honda. Look at this, you got a pond? Oh yeah. So this is the neighbor's pond. Gosh. Like that. Just don't drive through that yellow stuff. Yes, bar, planter bar. Yeah. You're set. We'll see you guys. Well, today is gonna be uh, it's gonna be a fun day. Got something crazy going on. Got the helper too. Josie, have you been on the channel? Uh, not yours, not Grant Hilbert. Okay. I've been on Spencer, Spencer TV. So Josie's Spencer's girlfriend. Yep. So you're technically my junior sister-in-law. <laughs> yep. If yep. you want to call it that. Yep. Let's call it that. There we go. <laughs> so we're finally getting the building pad up. I'm pulling the trigger and I'm just like, hey, this is where it's going and we're going to mow the entrance today. I don't know if we're going to mow down the corn where it's actually going to go. We're going to mow the entrance and driveway today and kind of measure it out and get a rough idea on uh, where this thing's going. So. Is he going to screw it up? Is he? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Do we just not say anything? <laughs> Let's see how he does. Get over. There you go. Now straighten it up by turning your front end. There you go. I'd say you're good. So I picked this up. It was, it's probably been like two, three months now since we picked it up. It's a Vale X-Series mower. You've probably seen the yellow ones. Those are diamonds. Those are like the, the popular brand or whatever. But we got this and I think it's 88 inches wide. The track is, no, it's 85 inches wide. The track's 78. So it covers our track, which is what we want. And you were trying to decide between like a smaller version and then this version, which is, yeah. this is probably a, just a tad too big or is it perfect? I think it's about perfect. It does toss the skid load around a little bit in the ditch. Like when you lift it up and down, you kind of do that, but. So there's a couple of these that are made to be mulchers, like actual mulchers. Disc and then there's a couple of them yep. that are made to be mowers. Now, what we were wanting is something that was like right in between that. Something that could mulch and something that could cut grass. Yeah, yeah. The mulchers can't cut, cut grass that good and we're gonna be doing a lot of grass and we're gonna be cutting corn today. So it's a high flow unit too. And it, uh, I think it's like, you want 30 gallons per minute. And the uh, Kubota's got 38, 39. It's yeah. actually, I think Kubota's one of the highest in its class for uh, gallons per minute hydraulic fluid flow. It's, Spencer's been using it a little bit, but I literally have been in the tractor like planting and stuff. So I haven't had a chance to use it and we even had, we haven't even filmed it or. We plan to use it a bunch this fall. And I thought maybe when I'm done with school, if I wanted to start like a little skid loader excavator business, this is probably where you start, I guess, for work like that. So. Josie, you ready? Yep. You want to do the honors? What honors? So try the skid steer, mow the first corn. Yeah, I will. I never really gave you guys like a layout of the building. So I drew something up. It's not perfect, but this will kind of give an idea, like a rough estimate of how this building's gonna go down. So here's the roadway. Here's my truck. Here's Shakira, the Pizza Hut delivery driver going down the roadway. And here's the driveway. As of right now, I've got two hundred, uh, like a 240 foot driveway lane planned out. So Spencer's literally gonna come in here He's gonna cut corn, and this is corn. So like the blue lines is corn across, here's the corn rows across. So we're going in here, this would be 240, and then we come out to this open gravel lot, essentially, which is gonna be my lot. And then here's the shed, the 60 by 120 shed, um, right here with a 30 foot garage door. To put some mines to ease, right now like the shed, 60 by 120 takes out 0.17, or sorry, 0.17 of an acre, 0.17 of an acre. And so by the time you add the lane, the gravel driveway, the gravel driveway, and actually like a little bit around the shed, because obviously builders are going to need room to build, that's going to take up most of the space. So I don't know, by the time it's all said and done, half an acre, a little over half an acre, probably is what we take out. So I would guess between like the revenue off the corn I would have got and the inputs, you know, I would guess at max we're taking out like 700, 800 
bucks worth of corn. Driveway, and then we can always go left and right to widen it. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking just go straight out, I don't know, 50 feet for now. We can figure it out from there. I'll get the drone and then I'll talk to you while you're going and you just go <laughs> out there. straight there. Nice. A little to your left. I'd say you have about 10 more rows and then you're to the end. And then take a half, half width or so. So I should be able to, we'll get the drone up now and I don't know, for now this is wide enough. Well, yeah. I think we'll want it wider, but for now we'll just keep it this wide in case. This, uh, this gets pretty tall, this spot right here. Yeah, really tall. so I think this was a fence row and that's why all this corn right here is tall all the way down there. In the past, it, like a couple years ago, I think this was a fence row. Okay. Because dad and I were wondering like, why is this corn so tall here? So, I think it? technically 60 by 120 is like point one eighth of an acre so at max we're gonna cut half an acre which would be i don't know 500 that'd be, that'd be 500 bucks revenue essentially revenue or profit revenue, revenue. okay yeah. but we lost the so it seems like horrible that we're cutting this but 500 bucks is a lot of money but it's only 500 yeah. bucks revenue. it just feels we're like we're like every yeah. at this least. was the first cornfield i planted too like yeah. ever first time killing it too i know <laughs> I think Spencer's having some fun. He's having a lot of fun. <laughs> he was just going ham. Yeah. Okay, now it's gonna fling towards us. Oh yeah. We got her done. That orange stake, if, if possible to see, is edge, corner of the building, corner of the building, corner of the building, and then uh, right up there. It actually seems really small, but it's uh, 60 by 120, so. Man, I'm glad I went 60 by 120 though, because uh, it seems kind of small, doesn't it? I feel like everything looks small. But once it's up. Once it's up. Well, probably a week later, and uh, everything's kind of dead and turning across here. So a couple days after we cut this, I came out here with uh, an excavating guy to try and grade this and, and see what we're gonna need for grade if we're gonna have to bring in fill dirt or what. And uh, they took a look at it and they're like, you know, we don't see this that often, but this is probably like perfect, like completely level. And they're like, you, you chose a good spot and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> we just guessed. We just literally guessed and went through a cornfield. So uh, I think this spot's gonna work good. 
and I'm gonna talk to my builders today. My builders are coming out and they're just gonna kind of see the spot, make sure everything's good. We're gonna talk about some electric stuff, but I'm thinking I scrape this off. And I don't even think we need any fill dirt or anything. And we're gonna come in and as of right now, half of it's gonna be cement. So the builder's probably gonna bring the building up like a foot already. So like this building's gonna be pretty, pretty darn tall already. So once it's built, the other 60, uh, the other 60 foot, I'm gonna go in and just put gravel kind of on the backside once it's built, we'll level it up. And like this building is probably gonna be up like a foot off the ground essentially. So then on the sides, we'll come back and probably add gravel along the sides and this building's gonna be pretty high as is. So that's what we're kind of thinking. I'm gonna talk with my builder today and uh, just make sure we're on the same track. But uh, what's really nice about this mower is you can like back drag and shred up all this stuff into small pieces. So you'll see here, it's gonna be tough to do it with one hand, but I'll try to get it. But essentially you can kind of shred those pieces up pretty darn good. Well, we got some more corn cut down. So, builder wanted more area for staging, so right here is the front of the building. So they want kind of an area, I don't know, it could probably be bigger than that for like staging out there. So we got that cut. We'll throw gravel rock out there. We'll rock the lane. And uh, I think I'm gonna have to strip this off and we'll probably bring in a little more rock and pack this down and get a nice base. And then I'll cut off maybe a tad more on the sides. I'm just taking it easy, taking little bites because I don't want to get go crazy and start cutting down too much corn, but another day. We're going to start scraping today. These hydraulic fittings are uh, pleasant, aren't they, Spence? Yeah, we got it. Okay. Ready? Yeah, get in a good position so we can... Yeah! I can't believe we got it. Oh, there we go. I think that was gonna fix it. It's actually working pretty good. He's trying, we're trying to get all the dead corn that we mowed kind of off the ground one so you can see ground and I think that's what the builder wanted. So we're using that grapple that we have that works good for like brush and stuff, but just kind of perfect angle and pretty much like root raking it across. So Grant's great. I think I think this is as good as we can get it. And he's grabbing big piles right there, stacking her up. All right, I gotta show you guys something real quick. I hooked up my Ranger to the trailer to move it out of a spot he needed to get to. And look at how much she's squatting. So I think that trailer is like 5,500 pounds, maybe 6,000 pounds. So you know, maybe maybe there's a thousand pounds on my. Maybe I don't know. Maybe a little less but she's squatting pretty good. That's a good little truck right there. We got most of this cleaned and cleared, but uh, I noticed the skid steer was smoking a bit. There was a bit of fluid coming back here. I'm not sure if it's oil. I'm not sure if it was deaf. It was going through a regen. I was like, just canceled the regen and then we shut it off. Maybe that's the thing where it was regening. Shouldn't have stopped it, even though you can cancel it. I don't know. Um, it's kind of corrosive fluid. It makes me think it's like kind of deaf back there. But uh, there's a Kubota dealership like eight miles away. So we're just gonna take it in on trailer, see what they think. It could be nothing too. Obviously there's fluid down there. You don't want that, but we'll see. We'll see what they think. We dropped the Kubota off at uh, Kubota dealership up there and uh, mechanics real nice and stuff. And he thinks it's deaf coming down there, which it's coming out of the top side. You can basically see where it's coming out of and uh, it's just draining down the whole thing. So that's why it's like kind of all corroded along there. So. Oh, they're gonna take a look at it this afternoon and uh, it's probably gonna be like a part or two that they got to order I would guess so we probably won't have it until next week or something Luckily, we got most of the corn cut so we should be good there and Honestly, all we got to do is haul in some rock now and do some leveling and stuff which 
maybe I'll have a dozer guy come out and do that. But, but seriously guys, thanks for watching this video and uh, the next video is probably gonna be putting up the building, getting the driveway and the pad prepped a little more and stuff, so.